Welcome everyone to FOMO Consulting. Today we're going to do a SWOT analysis of AMC stock. This will be a bit of a different uh, analysis than what you've probably seen on YouTube. Uh, all of the YouTubers have great uh, charting analysis, uh, fantastic DD on YouTube, obviously, as well as other social media sites, but hopefully this will lay it out in a little bit different format. Uh, and I hope you like it. If you do like it, please like and subscribe. So as of Friday, we clearly were down at uh, somewhat for the day, obviously, uh, $9.42 after hours, down an, an additional $0.09. Cents. However, uh, we did have a nice little push up towards the end of the day, and over the week, we were actually in the green and positive. So uh, most of that came from Monday, uh, the big push we had Monday, but we were able to essentially... Uh, flatten out week over week and actually finished slightly up. So that's very promising. Uh, anytime we consolidate throughout the week uh, under the circumstances is a win for us. So let's talk about what a SWOT analysis is. A SWOT analysis is looking at the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats, obviously for the company, for the stock, um, and the myriad of factors around those th type things. And then we obviously put uh, some deeper thought into those various categories and kind of get a sentiment about where the stock is going, about where their company is going. Um, and me personally, uh, should I or should I not be invested in this company? So let's look at the strengths. And so right now, and this is information as of Friday as I could find it, uh, we have massive ownership. We are at 88.5% retail ownership. That's us. Institutional is at 10.2%. 1.3% is locked up in mutual funds and insiders, uh, such as the CEO and, and other executives. Uh, the stock is 100% old uh, when you add all of those percentages up. There's not a lot of available shares. Uh, the 90, uh, utilization excuse me, is at 95%. Uh, which is extremely high. Uh, everyone that's been looking at other DDs on other uh, YouTube sites and what have you understands what that means. Uh, we are in a great position right now uh, as an ownership. You know, other strengths that I've identified, reopening throughout the U.S. and international markets, albeit to limited capacity. However, those restrictions are being lifted by the day in various local, state, and uh, municipalities, uh, international company, uh, countries, excuse me. I know that Canada is, is still somewhat locked down in other countries, uh, but we are seeing an incremental rise in capacity. Uh, the theater chain, I believe, is 99% open, which is very, very promising uh, in all locations. We just need to get the capacities up because capacity equals revenue, right? More seats, more sales. Um, so that's a good thing. We're heading in the right direction. As of uh, Friday, uh, Godzilla versus Kong added another 3.9 million in domestic sales and 39 million for the week, which is really huge. Under those limited capacities, uh, we are just rocking. We are absolutely rocking. Many other titles being released in a congested backlog of blockbuster movies from 2020. Obviously, with COVID, uh, a lot of things uh, in theaters, including AMC, were shut down for the uh, year. So it's created an, an enormous uh, catalog of really great movies coming out, um, even with limited capacities uh, for the next couple of months. Uh, the just sheer volume of titles should increase the revenues. Uh, that is how I see it. Uh, you know, there's some great titles coming out. Mortal Kombat's coming up shortly. Um, you've obviously got Ghostbusters as a family film, which <laughs> I'll probably go see. Um, anyway, uh, so th there's a lot of positivity around that. Uh, Q4 earnings were positive. Uh, considering the economic environment, you know, you can split hairs about uh, certain aspects of it. But at the end of the day, they made it through. Uh, the worst of the situation. They are certainly improving with reopenings occurring. We have all the the belief we should ha need uh, to move forward and, and believe that this company will recover to its uh, pre-pandemic levels, if not better. 
Uh, the, again, they are the largest theater operator in the world with a, uh, a little over a thousand theaters and a, a little over 11,000 screens. We own the market share when it comes to this form of entertainment. Uh, AMC is by far, in my opinion, the most comfortable uh, location to go see a movie with reclining seats. Some have the dine-in, some have the bars. Uh, it's just a fantastic environment and they're always very clean. Um, one other thing, and anyone that's probably watching this video certainly would agree, I would believe, large positive social media sentiment. Uh, you know, stock Twitch, you have over 20, 225,000 watchers. Um, Reddit is, is out of control. The eyes that are on this are just ridiculous. They're out of, off the charts. Um, there is so much positive sentiment around AMC, around getting back to where we want to be as a country, uh, either in the United States or abroad. Uh, returning back to those uh, normalcies that we've been deprived of over the last year. Uh, so it's huge. I mean, uh, AMC is just one of the many companies that are on the recovery trajectory. Um, so we have a lot to be proud of and a, and a lot of positivity around that. As of Friday, at least on Fintel, uh, 363 in institutions have bought and are increasing positions daily. Uh, there's a lot, some DD out there uh, that shows where various large institutions are uh, doubling, if not tripling, tripling their uh, positions in AMC. Uh, every day you can check another uh, institutional buyer has uh, stepped into the equation. Uh, over the last week, I can pretty well confirm there's been at, at least five to seven brand new institutions that uh, have jumped into this, which only provides us additional uh, positivity and support around what we're doing. Uh, the options volume is, is just really crazy, but we are holding steady at a very healthy two to one, uh, you know, ratio uh, calls over puts. So uh, there's a lot of positivity. And if you look at uh, expiring down the line, you know, uh, a month away, two months away, a year away, there's a lot of healthy volume there as well. Uh, another strength, as much as uh, some of the media would like to believe, AMC does have a, a billion dollars cash on hand that they raised uh, and other cash and assets. Uh, they are obviously renegotiating some of their debt load, uh, but operating revenue is improving based on uh, reopenings, uh, great titles coming out. So they're improving by the minute. Uh, so those are the strengths. I believe that the company uh, is in a great position from a business perspective to recover short and long term. Uh, so let's look at the uh, let's look at the weaknesses. So we all know that AMC has a lot of debt. Uh, obviously, they received a lot of rent concessions, lease concessions, uh, and that's really no different than any other brick and mortar company that did survive this pandemic, uh, that did have to shut down restaurants, hospitality, uh, you know, amusement, uh, you know, look at Disney, right? So uh, a lot of businesses obviously shut down either to a limited or full capacity over, over the last year. Uh, anyone that doesn't have debt, uh, <laughs> it would be very, very surprising. The airlines are recovering, the cruise industry is recovering, uh, albeit, with debt. So there's no real information here. It's just, but it is a weakness to the business right now that they have to overcome. Heavy short selling uh, it continues to be a blessing and a curse for us. Obviously, we want the price to rise, but also it increases by the day the possibility of short squeeze. If you look at the short interest, depending on which location you look, where you look, uh, you could find anywhere between 20 and 30%. Uh, at any given time. Obviously, it changes by the moment, but uh, the heavy shorting is drastically affecting the price. In my opinion, I believe it is affecting the price currently by at least 5 to $7 a share, um, especially compared to its competitors such as Cinemark and IMAX. Uh, additional price decrease for the short term before recovery. Uh, 
uh, in many ways due to the, the uh, shorting, the FUD. Uh, a lot of other negative factors are just really heavily attacking AMC for the obvious reasons. Uh, it is not a business related attack. It is uh, specifically around the stock price, in my opinion. Um, COVID-19 is, to me, probably the biggest weakness for the company right now. Obviously, there are a few spikes here and there throughout you know, the country and the world that have to be dealt with. There's been some in, in the European uh, market as well as here locally in the United States. Uh, but as long as we have a steady increase in capacities, especially in the larger, larger markets, uh, throughout the Southeast and the uh, obviously the Los Angeles area and the New York City area, we will continue to grow uh, revenues, uh, albeit slow and steady and not to quite the pace I believe we all want. I do believe uh, personally the Q1 uh, revenues will still be a little bit light. Uh, Q2, I believe, is where we'll really see the financial improvement of AMC uh, due to the movie titles, reopenings, capacities being uh, increased, and what uh, and what have you. The one biggest weakness I see, uh, just from a day-to-day -day basis, is it's a very emotional stock. And when I say that, it is sensitive uh, to news and events, which means we are sensitive to news and events. Uh, People do sell, they get scared, they see the uh, recent articles over the last few days, you know, that Wanda sold, which is actually old news. Uh, you know, you see the CNBC articles, the Molly Fool articles, uh, pick one, uh, the, you know, the price is worth one cent, it's, you know, price target of a dollar. All of those things shake, shake the confidence of the investor. Uh, so that is a weakness uh, to this stock. It is very, very sensitive uh, to news and events. Uh, positive news seems to ramp it up uh, 10 to 15 percent, if not more. And bad news seems to uh, drive it down three, four, five percent uh, on a given day, uh, albeit it does fight back and recover. But it is very, very sensitive. So keep that in mind as you you enter positions and exit positions. Uh, that it is emotionally sensitive for whatever reason. So let's look at uh, the opportunities. Th these are the fun things. <laughs> so news releases or new releases, excuse me, upcoming like Ghostbusters, Suicide Squad and Mortal Kombat, which are gonna be huge, uh, big ticket items. Uh, they're coming out very, very shortly. Uh, it's gonna be an, uh, an exciting time. I know a lot of uh, older and younger people are, are you know, Looking forward to seeing Mortal Kombat. Uh, you know, the opportunities again around the NSCC 2021-801 uh, rule, uh, as well as others, uh, that could get approved by the SEC this week. That would be an enormous catalyst uh, in, the, in the positive direction. The recent margin call, we don't know uh, what really is going to happen around the margin calls. Uh, it could short term, it can negatively affect the stock. It could make it uh, skyrocket. But rarely are these uh, events isolated. Our uh, financial system is so integrated. Uh, usually once one gets hit, uh, it usually starts a domino effect. Obviously, the, there's a lot of anxiety, uh, anxiety around some of these new, new rules and regulations. Uh, but I do believe, uh, all in all, it's going to be huge positive catalyst uh, for the AMC stock as well as others, uh, especially the ones that have been heavily, heavily shorted, uh, more specifically ones with synthetic shares that are unaccounted for. So obviously, going back to the threats, being an emotional stock, if we have positive news catalyst, uh, whether it's around the SEC approvals of uh, the NSCC rules, Margin calls, you know, that could cause a ton of volatility up or down. Uh, obviously, we all hope it goes up, uh, but that that is a reality. Uh, synthetic shares outstanding. The truth is there's a lot of estimates. There's a lot of due diligence on going around that. 
But quite frankly, uh, we just don't know. We just don't know how many synthetic shares are outstanding, but I think it's fair to say it's quite a few. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see, and especially around some of these uh, new NSCC rules to see how that kind of plays out. But uh, I do believe it is a substantial amount uh, that will have to get uh, basically settled at some point, uh, hopefully soon. The other opportunity is, is, in, as I see it, is, is institutions versus hedge funds. Now, I haven't seen a lot of people talking about this, but the truth of the matter is a lot of the institutions, in my opinion, are in it for the long, uh, for the long haul, uh, you know, six months, 12 months to see it full to AMC to, to full recovery. Uh, I believe they are getting somewhat impatient uh, around the heavily uh, shorting nature of this of this stock compared to its uh, competitors. I do believe that some will break rank at some point and start putting more pressure on the shorts, which could obviously uh, cause somewhat of a buying uh, spike, which could obviously cause a gamma short squeeze. That is just my belief. Um, but I do believe that, that especially looking at the call volume, uh, you know, at the end of uh, next week or this upcoming week, uh, expiring 416 will be a huge catalyst. Um, I think some of the institutions are tired of watching the stock price go down. Um, and I do believe they're going to start fighting back. It's just a matter of time. And hopefully they're on our side, obviously. Upcoming verification of the uh, share count is going to be a huge catalyst. Obviously, uh, shares outstanding should... <laughs> equal 450 million, right? Uh, but if they don't, obviously, there's going to be, again, another potential for opportunity uh, for, for a price spike. If, if through that audit and that count, uh, they come up with way more shares than obviously is part of the shares outstanding, uh, there's going to be a problem, right, for somebody. And hopefully that's a positive increase uh, for the share price. We don't, I, at least I have not come across a date of when that will come about, but I'm sure we'll find out soon. Uh, and, uh, but I do uh, believe it is ongoing as we speak. Upcoming positive news catalyst, obviously, again, going back to the emotionally sensitive stock, uh, news sensitive, uh, it's a positive catalyst around additional reopenings, capacity levels increase. Um, you know, over the next, say, 30, 45 days, we should start seeing the first uh, estimates around their, uh, you know, from analysts around Q1 earnings. Um, hopefully, they are within a reason and they're not setting AMC up uh, to fail uh, when it comes to the Q1 earnings reports. Uh, hopefully, they are fair and objective. But I do believe that there's an opportunity there if AMC is able to once again meet those expectations, if not beat them positively, that is a huge positive catalyst for uh, the stock. Uh, gamma short squeeze, obviously there is a ton of information on the internet, uh, YouTube, Reddit, uh, stock twits, you name it, it's out there about uh, the gamma and short squeeze potential, obviously short interest. Uh, it almost seems inevitable at this point that, that one or the other or both will occur. Um, um, for one, I am invested in this uh, particular stock and I am looking forward to uh, that potential just like everyone else. So uh, fingers crossed there. Obviously other opportunities, um, you know, there's been rumors over the last couple of months around, you know, potential merger acquisition, uh, by Amazon and others. Again, it's just rumor. Uh, sometimes when there's smoke, there's fire. However, uh, that would be a fantastic scenario. I think the stock price would absolutely fly uh, to the moon just by itself uh, if that were to occur. But I do believe other strategic partnerships uh, will be inked this year because I think me personally that AMC and the industry as a whole uh, does understand that uh, 
that they are in somewhat of a weird place where they do have to find these partnerships uh, to keep uh, going along with technology, but also keep uh, the brick and mortar, the AMC, the theaters, you know, grounded in, in what everyone loves to do. But I think options are probably the, the new th uh, flavor of the day, uh, if you will, that everyone, you know, some people just don't feel comfortable going out right now due to COVID. I think the vast majority of, of people uh, do. Obviously, vaccinations for COVID are increasing. Uh, but there are some people who have just gotten glued to the couch, and that's just the way it is. But it, I do believe that there's opportunities for business partnerships that we are not aware of that will be announced, uh, you know, six months, 12 months, who knows, maybe next week. But uh, I do believe that the industry as a whole uh, does understand they need each other uh, just from an entertainment and a distribution standpoint. So let's look at the threats. So the threats are obviously foot articles and news reports. Obviously, whatever social media platform you're on, uh, whether it's YouTube or, you know, stocked with Reddit, pick one. Uh, you watch the evening news, you know, CNBC or otherwise. You know, there always seems to be a cheap shot by some journalist somewhere around AMC or GameStop, uh, amongst a few others, but we are the targets. Uh, most of which are either regurgitated old news, such as Wanda sold their shares, uh, you know, price targets of a dollar or one penny, which are ridiculous. These are all psychological uh, tactics to, again, spread fear, uncertainty, and doubt. If they can make you, make you doubt, your position, if they can make you doubt your conviction, they want your shares. That is, at the end of the day, this is a business transaction. They want your shares. They have to cover before the squeeze occurs, and they know it. Uh, so take the FUD articles, news reports, take them objectively. The facts are what they are. You can't, you can lie, you can manipulate, you can... Uh, you know, sway an article one way or another, but at the end of the day, the numbers don't lie, hopefully. Um, so just read it with an objective mind and an objective eye. Uh, streaming services continue to cut into some of the revenues. We don't know right now uh, what the, the short and the long-term effects of that will be. I think we all enjoyed those services uh, while we were sitting on our couches during the last year. Uh, I do believe like some other technologies that really kind of uh, came, you know, front and center, such as Zoom and different things in the business world. Uh, I do believe that that streaming services and others, uh, you know, will decline as the world reopens. At the end of the, at the, end of the day, we are a social society. Uh, we like to socialize. We like to go out. We like to date, take our wives, take our spouses, uh, whatever it is, we like to socialize. And socializing involves going to a movie theater going to dinner going getting on a plane to travel getting on a cruise ship to vacation we are a social society and that's just how it is so uh, we really don't under, uh, know what streaming will continue to do over the next 12 months obviously it played an important role uh, for the last year continuing uh, to shorting or continuing of shorting excuse me uh, that's going to continue. Uh, I believe it's just going to be a battle that we're going to have to continue to fight uh, until some of the rules uh, and regulations change around that practice. Uh, but one thing I can say is trading flat pretty much last week uh, is a positive sign that we can hold our own. We are tough. Uh, the stock is tough. It is not shrinking to the pressure. Uh, it is ebbing and flowing, as most stocks do, but it is finding support. And our buying, our uh, holding creates that support. Uh, they can only get it so low as long as uh, you have buyers and holders, right? Uh, 
the other biggest threat or one of the other biggest threats I believe is impatience and FOMO with other stocks. Obviously, if you, uh, everybody feels like they're missing out, right? Uh, you see GameStop, it spikes. You see uh, the other day, SOS, uh, you know, there was all kinds of noise around SOS. Everybody feels like they're holding their stock. They're letting opportunities slip by. Uh, you know, you have to be convicted in, in the company. You have to be convicted in what you are investing in. Uh, if you're not convicted, obviously, you have a choice, right? Uh, but I do believe that the longer this goes, that impatience and FOMO with other stocks will continue uh, to, to create a weight on uh, especially the retail investor. And I believe that's exactly what hedge funds and others want to drag this out to see how committed we are. Uh, I think that they believe that their money can outlast our conviction uh, in this stock. And, you know, the time will tell, but I do believe uh, the commitment for a lot of different reasons from a lot of different people, everyone's motivated by different things, right? This is personal, this is uh, revenge, it's, it's, it's political, it's civil, it's uh, financial. There, there's a million different reasons why people are invested, especially in AMC and GameStop. Um, but I do believe that that is part of the, the psychological warfare that's going on uh, from the hedge funds to the retail traders is trying to outlast, outlast them, continue with the FUD articles, and beat down the 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 spirit of the investor, because we are investors. Uh, again, negative news continuing. The stock issuance vote of uh, the potential 500 million uh, million shares on uh, May 4th. Uh, I'm sure most everyone has voted by now. Uh, I specifically voted no uh, to the share issuance. Uh, I do not believe, even if it does pass, that they'll issue any shares in the near future. I believe truly they are replenishing their essential savings account uh, for acquisitions, obviously to give them flexibility for debt if in fact uh, revenues don't increase to expected limits. Uh, I do believe that they'll use that as an emergency exit only uh, with due notice to all investors. I do not believe those shares will hit the market. However, just in the last week, we saw GameStop uh, issue three and a half million shares. The shares, the share price plummeted 20% by the end of the day. What happened? It recovered, right? Um, so it, it's usually a short-term effect regardless, but uh, I do not believe that that will be an issue we'll have to face over the next 90 to 120 days, uh, even if it does pass. Uh, if it does, we'll go from there, but I do believe that, that uh, the leadership of the company will be uh, as transparent as they possibly can to their customer base, which is in most part uh, the retail trader, about what the intentions are and what the actions will be. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out. The other threat I do believe is that there is a, uh, I'm starting to see some cracks in the, uh, the YouTuber nation, uh, which kind of inspired me to get involved in, in this. Uh, you know, I'm starting to see a few little slights, a few uh, that are starting to kind of play on each other um, and go against one another. Uh, again, opinions are perfectly fine, uh, but I can tell you the YouTube community has more influence over, uh, I believe, the retail traders uh, than a lot of other forums and a lot of other formats. I believe that there's a lot of people looking for positive daily confirmation uh, and they watch the various YouTube videos uh, to get that, that, you know, I'm invested in the right thing. And uh, so the last thing I, I believe that the, the community needs is uh, to start fracturing. Uh, I think everyone's in it for, 
their personal reasons uh, for whatever that is. Uh, but I do believe that that, again, it could be a threat as time goes on. Uh, the last political, uh, excuse me, the last threat, you know, uh, and I think this would be the doomsday scenario, would be uh, for some sort of political salvation uh, for the hedge funds that uh, we know have overshorted a lot of these stocks uh, that are backed into a corner and to protect the financial markets, uh, you know, some sort of political lifeboat uh, would be, I think, uh, highly disappointing, I think, for, for a lot of retail traders at this point. I think to get free and fair trade, I believe uh, you have winners and losers, and sometimes you have big winners and big losers. And to shake it out, I believe, uh, you know, politicians need to let this play out. Uh, and and just let it let it happen. Whatever that is, obviously we'll clean uh, clean the house and make sure that things like this hopefully don't happen again. But again, uh, I'm hoping for the possibility that you know the retail trader has a a fair shake and a fair voice, uh, and they can actually. You know, have have the same information, have the same uh, knowledge, and they can make the best decisions uh, around how they invest their money, uh, and not be at a disadvantage each and every time they hit the buy or sell button. Um, so that is completing the threat analysis. So let's just summarize kind of what all we went through, and I know this is somewhat of a long video. However, I hope you found it somewhat informative just from an objective standpoint. Um, so in summary, you know, I do believe my personal opinion is AMC stock is a great recovery play. Uh, you know, you may invest in, you know, one of the airlines or one of the cruise lines or, you know, one of the other theater chains, whatever that is. But I do believe that that some of these stocks that have been so beaten down by uh, COVID and the revenue losses, and to me, maybe I'm the optimist, but for some of these companies that are able to basically be shut down for a year and still survive, those are strong companies. Albeit they've had to maneuver, they've had to take on some debt to do so, but they're strong and the leadership is strong. And those are the type of companies that, that I believe in. Um, I do believe revenues are increasing uh, and will continue to increase uh, to pre-pandemic levels within three to six months. Uh, a lot of that just depends on open reopening capacities, rules and regulations around uh, at, at your local and state level. Um, you know, again, I think we're going to see an increase uh, uh, FUD articles, uh, FUD news, uh, meant to shake the shares out of your hand. Uh, you'll have to decide if that is something you, you want to go through or not, quite frankly. Uh, and patience, uh, again, how long this takes, if you're invested uh, because you believe in the company or if you're invested because you're looking for the short squeeze, I believe those are two different investors, uh, two different traders. Uh, some are looking for the, the gratification tomorrow. Some are looking for gratification uh, six months from now. Uh, two completely different mindsets, right? So, uh, but I do believe that the company, uh, you know, is heading in the right direction. Uh, the May 4th vote is going to be a big catalyst up or down. I do believe uh, the week prior to will probably be a lot of uh, nervous investors. Uh, and again, I believe the hedge funds are playing a, a the long game to get there uh, because they, I believe that the FUD articles and the uh, propaganda wars will only increase as we get into the second half of April uh, around that to scare as many investors out of their shares that they need to cover uh, their, their short positions. That is my personal belief. Uh, and again, FOMOs with other stocks, 
based on that impatience, whether a game stop, stop spikes or uh, SOS or, you know, pick, pick a stock, it doesn't matter. Uh, different stock spike. Oh, I wish I was invested in that. Oh, I should take my money. Again, that's a personal decision uh, you have to make for yourself. Uh, continued mass belief in the company, I think, is a huge, huge, huge catalyst uh, of positivity and the potential for price increases and a potential short, short squeeze. Uh, very, very rarely do you see this much uh, diamond handed support. Uh, around a stock and so vehemently believe in a company to save it. Um, it's, it's refreshing, uh, quite frankly, and, and inspiring to see how many people can gather, common everyday people uh, that we pass on the street every day that, that are invested in, into this stock, invested into this company, and believe in it short and long term. Uh, and believe in the recovery of, of our way of life. I think it's as much about that as it is anything else, is recovery in culture, recovery in normalcy. And AMC stock, I believe, is part of that process. Uh, psychological toughness to get through the process. You know, every day, again, you're going to be at work wherever you are in life, and you're going to look at your... Your Weeble account or your, you know, Robinhood account or your Fidelity account, whatever that is, you're going to check the stock price 50 times a day. And if it's up, you're in a good mood. If you're, if it's red, you're in a bad mood or whatever that is. Just remember why you're investing in it. And it's going to ebb and flow. It's going to take psychological uh, toughness to get through all the FUD, to get through the price decreases, uh, to get through all of the, the efforts that the people who are betting against you will parlay uh, to get to their objective, whatever that objective is. Uh, you have to be equally as tough if you're equally committed as they are. Um, it's a lot like a, uh, it's a lot like a football game, right? It's, it's, it's a battle of the trenches. Uh, three yards in a crowd, cloud of dust. That's where we are right now. Comparatives against other stocks in the same market segment, such as Cinemark, AMC, or excuse me, Cinemark and IMAX and others, you know, they're trading in the low 20s. We all, I think, believe that's where AMC should be trading uh, without being shorted half to death. Uh, so I am excited about the future. Uh, me personally, uh, again, not financial advice. It is clearly just my opinion as how I objectively look at this company and look at the stock price. The most uh, refreshing and humbling thing, I believe, is that truly the world is watching AMC and GameStop. Huge potential to make changes to the rules, whether it's SEC and SEC, you name it, uh, for free and fair trade. Free and fair trade for the retail investor, again, to have the same uh, potential, uh, the same information, the same tools uh, to invest in the companies that they so choose. I don't think there's much more to it than that. I believe that everyone just wants a fair shake. Everyone wants a, wants a fair opportunity in a free market. Uh, that is where the fight is. That is where the belief is, at least for me. So I'll wrap it up with this, uh, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, quite frankly, it is my first. Uh, I will be putting out others from various different topics. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, subscribe, whatever. Um, you know, I'm not going to be, uh, you know, sell you on that. You'll either like it or subscribe it. Uh, I will be putting out more again. I felt, uh, very inspired and very convicted about putting this out simply because I see, uh, so much information out there and I wanted to try to consolidate it in, in one place in a, uh, little bit more congealed format, uh, where we could walk along. So Hope everyone has a blessed day.
And thank you again for watching. Hopefully you watched all the way to the end and I'll be in touch soon. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.